Hi everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach, this time focusing on the types of microscopes that you need to know about for the A-level biology subject. You will all be using optical microscopes in the lab to carry out practicals and probably study some histology samples when learning about the cell topic. The microscopes that you'll be using are also known as light microscopes and they are a very important tool in biology. Using them correctly is also an essential skill. High power compound microscopes use visible light and a combination of lenses to magnify objects up to several hundred times. The resolution of light microscopes is limited by the wavelength of light and specimens must be thin and mostly transparent for light to pass through. There will be little in the way of detail seen in specimens that are thick or opaque. I've got some examples of some light micrographs over to the right of your screen. The other type of microscope we have are the electron microscopes. They use a beam of electrons instead of light to produce an image. The higher resolution of these microscopes is due to the shorter wavelength of electrons. There are two basic types of electron microscope, the scanning electron microscopes, otherwise known as SEM, and transmission electron microscopes, or TEM. In SEMs, the electrons are bounced off the surface of an object to produce detailed images of the external appearance. It scans a sample with a beam of primary electrons which knocks electrons from the sample surface. These secondary electrons are picked up by a collector, amplified and transmitted onto a viewing screen or a photographic plate. This allows the production of a 3D image. A microscope of this power easily obtains clear images of very small organisms such as bacteria and small particles such as viruses. The image produced is of the outside surface only and you can see a couple of those SEM examples on the screen now. TEMs or transmission electron microscopes produce very clear images of specially prepared thin sections. Electrons pass through the thin specimen and are scattered. Magnetic lenses focus the image onto a fluorescent screen or a photographic plate. The sections are so thin that they have to be prepared with a special machine called an ultramicrotome which can cut wafers to around 30 thousandths of a millimeter thick. It can magnify several hundred thousand times. Both electron microscopes will give you high magnification and high resolution. And this is due to the shorter wavelength of electrons. You must remember that. So I wanted to ensure that you guys had an opportunity to look at some past paper questions to see how you would word some of the answers. So this one over here that says contrast how an optical microscope and a transmission electron microscope work and contrast the limitations of their use when studying cells. Now, this particular question is worth five to six marks. And what you essentially have to talk about are the differences between the two of them and also their limitations. So how each of their disadvantages are different from each other. So if you can just pause this video right now and have a go at writing down some of your thoughts, then you can press play when you're ready to check your answers. So if we look at the marking scheme, the first thing that I want to alert you to is the use of the word and. When you're contrasting two separate microscopes, it is a good idea to use the word and, so you would say one uses this and the other one uses that, or however it might be. So in this particular example, we're saying that the transmission electron microscope, or the TEM, uses electrons and the optical uses light. That would be one mark. The next point is talking about the resolution. So TEM allows a greater resolution. Please don't say the great resolution because in comparison to the optical microscope, it is greater. And remember the question is asking you to compare. And in relation to the greater resolution, you could talk about how smaller organelles can be observed better or in greater detail. And you can also name those cell structures. Remember that transmission electron microscopes view only dead specimens, whereas the optical microscope can view live specimens. And the optical can show some of your specimens in colour, but the TEM does not show in colour at all. 
For the TEM, you require thinner specimens. And because of that, it takes more time to prepare your slides. And the last point talks about how the TEM focusing on using magnets, but optical uses glass lenses. I've got another question over here that's worth a similar number of marks. This one says, describe the principles and the limitations of using a transmission electron microscope to investigate cell structure. There's two areas that this question wants you to look at. Principles basically means how does the microscope work? And limitations is talking about the disadvantages of the particular microscope. So you can split your answer up into two sections. So if you pause the video now and just have a go at answering it, you can press play when you're ready to look at the answers. OK, so if we look at the principles first, the transmission electron microscope principles work on the fact that electrons will pass through the thin specimen and those electrons, because they have a shorter wavelength, give a high resolution. That would give you points one to four. Points two and three refer to how the denser part of your specimen will absorb more electrons and so the denser parts appear thicker. This is quite a good point to note down as part of your revision notes. Please note that you can only get a maximum of three marks by talking about the principles. The other half of the marks will come from talking about the limitations. So if we have a look at the limitations now, you've got to remember that with the electron microscopes, you cannot look at living material or that material must be in a vacuum, which means it still must be dead. The specimen also takes a lot of time to prepare and it's got to be very thin. So that can also be a limitation that you talk about. As part of that, you could talk about how there's a complex staining method or a long preparation time and how the image is not in 3D, only 2D images are produced. Another point that I will mention is point number seven, where they talk about artefacts. Artefacts are part of the slide that aren't necessarily part of the cell itself or part of the specimen that you wish to see. It could be that they're little air bubbles or parts of dust that have got in when you're trying to prepare your slide. So when you're looking at things under such a high magnification, you do expect some artefacts to be present. So I hope that was helpful for everyone. Thank you so much for watching, as always. If you've got any questions about this topic, please leave me a comment below this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Bye for now.